Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Hello and welcome to this video. Um, today we are continuing our journey through the uh, Rabbits novel um, by Terry Miles. And I hope everyone out there is doing good and I hope life is treating you well. So without further ado, let's get into this. By the time I was finally arrested in the basement of the Harvard Exit Theater, I hadn't eaten or slept for three days. Uh, that's never good. Um, though when I was younger, I would pull stunts. Well, I wouldn't break it anywhere. I'd just go three, four days, or two, three days without sleep or eating, and because I just simply forgot. Um, in fact, this past weekend, I got busy doing stuff and my wife yelled at me because the grand total of food that I consumed from a Friday evening to a Sunday afternoon was like one bag of Doritos. So yeah, um, I get occupied sometimes. The arresting officer claimed I'd told her I was there waiting for someone, that I'd been following important signs, and needed to be in that theater at a very specific time in order to meet somebody I referred to as the passenger. Yeah. Um, yeah, this sounds like some, like we're going to, getting ready to jump off into some deep stuff here. Full disclosure. There were a couple of things that had happened during this period that may have added to my confused state of mind. My psychiatrist had recently changed my medication, and our family dog had passed away from complications during a routine dental surgery. Um, must be nice to, to, do, to be in a position to have the money to have dental work done on a pet. Um, I've had... I think the closest I've come is getting my cat's teeth cleaned and that's because it's a relatively cheap um, procedure so yeah um, I don't know maybe in Washington State and other places stuff like that's more affordable but I know in East Texas not so much my dog was older, but she'd been completely healthy at the time of her accidental death. I was crushed. She was a little brown chihuahua named Ruby, and she was the last living connection I had to my parents. Um, yeah. Chihuahuas are weird dogs, though. Though I, 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 I've seen some fairly resilient uh, chihuahuas to both physical... And uh, mental uh, trauma. That, I mean, they're a little yip yip dog, but they're fairly resilient. Ruby had been there for me when I came home from the press conference, where they'd announced that the rescue operation, which had eventually turned into a recovery operation, was now strictly a salvage operation. When my parents were finally pronounced dead, Having Ruby there, needing to be fed and walked, helped me make it through the seemingly endless days. Yeah, um, I know when my first wife passed, um, having pets to console is a pretty good thing. Um, they're good to have, they're good to have. Well, they're good to have any time, but they, they come in especially well when you were at that point. When she died, I was well and truly alone. One night, shortly after Ruby died, 
I was playing a brand new massively multiplayer online role playing game, MMORPG, called. My wife does those. Um, I think I said talked about that in other videos, um, but she does like the the role play for um, Grand Theft Auto, and I like watching it when she streams it. Um, I like watching it. But I have absolutely no desire to play something like that. I'm more of a, a solitary game, first-person shooter type person. Underlight. When another game popped into my mind. It was something my parents had played with me when I was a kid. Something called Connections. Connections was all about trying to find patterns and relationships between a number of seemingly disparate and unrelated images. Actually, we play, when I was a prison guard, we, we play a similar game, but it's, we call it the what if game. So, you know, it, the parallels, I mean, par there are parallels in everything. If you, if you have to look for them real deep, they're probably, you're probably forcing it. But if you see something, you go, hey, I, I recognize that because of blah, blah, blah. You know, the, 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 it's that harmony and balance thing all together. My parents had introduced me to Connections on a weekend evening, sometime in the late summer. We were getting ready to go to the drive-in, and it had started raining really hard. I was angry because for the first time I'd managed to persuade my parents to let me pick an R-rated movie. Hmm. I wonder the time frame on this. I can't remember when this is set. I think this is set in 2021, the year the book came out. So, um, I don't know. Um, can't think of any movies about, you know, in the late 2010s much less a drive-in. I'd chosen Peter Jackson's The Frighteners, and they'd reluctantly agreed. Don't remember that movie. Then again, I'm I'm not a real, I'm not a real big Peter Jackson fan. Um, him as a director. Um, I did watch his Lord of the Rings stuff, but a lot of his other stuff is just kind of meh. I mean, it's not bad. Trust me, it's not bad. It's just me personally. It's just kind of, yeah. I called the drive-in theater, but they told me all of the movies had been canceled because of the weather. My mother decided this wasn't an unfortunate event, but rather an opportunity for a family game night. She made popcorn, and the three of us played Monopoly. It was a far cry from the Frighteners, but I enjoyed playing games with my parents. And I loved the way my mother made popcorn. Um, we do popcorn, too. We get the loose kernels and do it in a cast iron uh, skillet. Or cast iron. Yeah, cast iron skillet. She called it a delivery system for butter. Later, after we'd all made banana splits, a delivery system for hot fudge, my father brought out a worn rectangular black box with the word connections written in burnt orange across the front in a modern font i'd been through the closet where our family kept our games and hmm where did that um burnt orange on black that either looked really really cool or really really weird i think i'm i'm, I'm leaning more toward the cool kind of like a fiery look but million times. I'd never seen that box before. I remember my mother wasn't impressed when she saw it. I heard her whisper to my father that he was forcing things, that I wasn't ready, that this game might exacerbate something she referred to as my condition. Uh-oh. Don't you hate it when your parents talk about something that you have no clue that you have or might have? He told her that was exactly why it was important. Inside the box were a variety of photographic images in a series of color-coded envelopes. 
The pictures had been printed on some kind of thick cardstock. Each card had some words or numbers printed on the back of it. I wasn't allowed to see the backs of the image cards, only the pictures themselves. So, kind of sounds like a, a, a variant on the uh, path cards. After a minute or two spent arranging the images and envelopes, my father lifted up one of the cards and asked me to look at the image carefully. It was a picture of a tiger in a lush green jungle setting. After a moment, he put that card away and held up another one. This one was a photograph of a woman sitting at a Formica table in a 1950s style kitchen. Hmm. Now this is interesting. Um, I don't remember this part in the book when I read it. Well, I kind I, I I remember the gist of it, but I don't remember the details. She was doing some kind of accounting work. My mother asked me if I could see anything in the second picture that was similar to something in the first. I told her that the patterns of the tiger's markings matched some of the patterns on the wallpaper. Then my father brought out a third photograph. Taken in what appeared to be some kind of honky-tonk bar. Okay, it's coming back to me. This is actually, this, this is kind of, um, me and my wife when we go camping kind of play a similar game where we where we pick things out like we're on a hiking trail or um like if um like this past summer we went to dangerfield state park and we were picking out things in town that were possibly there because of the state park being there and the tourism and you know what places, you know, would be, you know, what you would consider local for locals and what places, you know, are tourists because the state park. The photograph featured a bottle of beer sitting on top of an old Wurlitzer juke box. My father asked me if there was anything in the third photograph that matched the second. I told him that the time on the clock in the second picture matched the numbers of the song on the jukebox in the other. This continued a few more times until I could no longer come up with anything to connect the images. Now that, that, actually I think that would be a fun game to put out, to be honest with you. You know, kind of like, you know, you have the games or the little things, at least I did growing up or they in school, you get, you'd have two pictures and you'd have to find all the differences, you know, like one, you know, might have a guy in a suit and the other one has the same guy in a suit except one has a bow tie and one has a regular long tie or one has a boulder hat where the other one has a top hat type thing. Where you where, where this one you're pick you're 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 going with similarities or things that are the same. We played the game where you had the opposite, you know, where you had changes. Interesting. I think that would be cool to do that though. Find, you know, have pictures and find the the things that overlap from picture to picture. That would be a cool game to actually produce to be honest with you. That's when the game ended. We played connections a few more times over the next couple of months. It was fun spending time with my parents, but staring at cards and trying to find some kind of link between them really wasn't much of a game. After a while, I found myself getting bored. I'd started dreading the sight of the black box with the orange letters. I don't know. I could see. I could see that if you overdo it, but though no, just as a just as a a, a a game and and like I said, it kind of I think it kind of builds off the the premise of the path cards from the second season of the podcast. That's kind of cool. It's one of those things. See, this is what I love. This is one of those things that's kind of an Easter egg if you've listened to the podcast, but you don't have to have listened to the podcast to understand what's going on in this story. And we'll go ahead and call this video good here. And until next time, be a good human, be good to other humans. 
Peace. Hey, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?